This is the site of the largest mass murder in the history of the world. Auschwitz. 1.1 million people died here. More than the total of British and American losses in the whole of the Second World War. This is the story of the evolution of Auschwitz and the mentality of the perpetrators. It's a history based in part on documents and plans only discovered since the opening of archives in Eastern Europe and informed by interviews with people who were there, including former members of the SS. And if you ask yourself if this is really necessary, you say to yourself, yes, of course. We've been told that these are our enemies and there is a war on. But the horrors of Auschwitz did not occur in isolation. The camp evolved alongside the Nazi plan for the conquest of Eastern Europe, a war of destruction unlike any other in modern times one in which innocent civilians were murdered by special killing squads. The order said they're to be shot. And for me, that was binding. As the war developed, Nazi decision makers conceived one of the most infamous policies in all history. What they called the final solution the extermination of the Jews. And at Auschwitz, they journeyed down the long and crooked road to mass murder to create this, the building which symbolized their crime, a factory of death. There were the people screaming, all the people, you know. They didn't know what to do, scratching the walls, crying until the, the, the gas took effect. If I close my eyes, the only thing I see is standing up. Women with children in, in their hands there. What follows is the surprising story of the birth of Auschwitz and the Nazi policy of mass extermination. With Auschwitz initially built for an altogether different purpose than the gassing of the Jews and the Nazis evolving their wider policy of killing in ways that defy the popular myth of the SS as robotic killers who simply acted under orders. <laughs> 